left this morning from church. My wife said to me, she says, well, you're going to be on a motorcycle. She says, don't you think that thing will fly right out of your pocket there? I said, ah. She's not taking the bike with a windshield. Well, I get up park. I guess that's Park Ave or Park Street. Park Ave. Before Mission Road, I wasn't going that fast. And all of a sudden, <laughs> I'm looking straight up. <laughs> and I go, where else do you look? I said, okay, Lord, she was right again. <laughs> then I thought about, well, you know, I can get away with this. Just let it be. But there was a guy with a red Mustang that saw it. I wasn't getting away. I had to go back and get it. It's got a little tire prints on it now. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways. You know, it's funny. Have you counted the cost? They say in that song. You know, when you don't think there's danger, you're just kind of easy. You just roll with it, right? I didn't think there was any danger. I, didn't, I thought everything was fine. My wife had warned me, hey, this could happen. I'm like, nah. Isn't that the way the world is today? We tell them what's going on. Jesus is coming. Nah. Everything's fine. It's, it's, it's no big deal. No big deal. You know, the last time we got together, I, I just want you all to realize, we look up there at the clock, it's 11.43, so don't pound on me if you get a little bit over 12. Take your time. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, the last time I was here, we talked about uh, the Laodicean. We talked about the fact that we are Laodicean. And we went in through some of the problems that Laodicea has. So today, we'd like to take a little time and talk about some of the remedies. So I've entitled this the uh, Laodicean Remedy, or a subtitle of A Faith That Works. A Faith That Works. Beginning in verse 17 of Revelation 3, it says, Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. That's what we talked about last time. I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Now, gold refined in the fire, is that richness? It's real riches, isn't it? It's God's riches. It's good works. It's justification. The white raiment represents clothes, right? Do you want to see the shame of your nakedness, right? The righteous acts or sanctification. You ever think about it that way? The eye salve. What does the eye salve do? It causes you to be able to see, right? And, and what do we think of when we see? The Holy Spirit. Right? The Holy Spirit. What were, what were the prophets of the old days called before they were called prophets? Seers. Seers. Hmm. Seers. Interesting, isn't it? Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Timothy. First Timothy six. Y'all there? All right, I'm going to start at seventeen. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded, nor trust in uncertain riches 
but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. Brothers and sisters, did the Pharisees of old have good works? Yes. They sure did, didn't they? Outwardly, they looked really good. Didn't Paul say, and was he not a Pharisee? Pharisee of the Pharisees. Didn't he say to the law he was blameless? Perfect. Right? But why did they do the good works? What was their reason for the good works that they did? Pardon me? We like to say, uh, there you go. They were, they were putting the, the cart before the horse, weren't they? They were working their way to heaven, so to speak. The motivation was wrong, right? They did it because they liked men to see them, look good, sound good, do the right thing. But was it for the right reason? Is the question. We talked about a little bit in Sabbath school class about a man named, a man named Nicodemus. He was a very well-known Pharisee. And he came to Jesus by night. Right? Why did he come to him by night? You reckon he might have been ashamed a little bit? But he said to Jesus, what did he say? What was, what was the question that he asked? How, how can a man do these good works if God be not with him? Right? What did, God, what did Jesus say to him? Lest ye be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. So he broke right through, didn't he? He told him exactly. He went right to the heart of the problem. He didn't, he didn't mince words. He didn't mess around. Jesus drove it right in there. I mean, Nicodemus opened this door, and, and Jesus drove a 747 through that thing. Knocked the walls down. Thankfully, evidently, Nicodemus really did listen because later on we read about how Nicodemus spent the rest of his money building the church and doing what was right. But the Pharisee that once did everything for show had a heart conversion. Didn't he? Everything he did then after was not about a show. It was doing what he had to do because... This, how could I do anything else, as Paul said? How could I do anything else? You know, real righteousness comes from disinterested benevolence. You follow me? Disinterested benevolence. It's not about a show. It, it, it's, it's terrible to think that so many people do what they do to be seen of men. They want people to think good of them. I mean, everybody wants people to think good of them, don't you? I mean, it'd be crazy to think that you'd want somebody to think bad of you, right? But doesn't the Bible say, be ye where if everyone speak good of you? Hmm. You ever chew on that one a little bit and think about it? Let's turn our Bibles to Galatians. Galatians 5. Galatians 5. Guess where I'm going. 6? 6. <laughs> you, were, you were getting there. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but what? Faith. Faith which worketh by love. 
when the Pharisees, some, some of the most unloving people of that time, weren't they? Were they not? How were they about Jesus and how he kept the Sabbath? Very much so, right? What about Jesus not washing his hands? And his disciples not washing their hands correctly before they ate. You remember that? Yes. You see, the difference, the difference between Jesus and the difference between the Pharisees, the Pharisees quoted Rabbi such and such, Roman, 50 years ago. And you know, these rabbis, and I'm not trying to pick on the rabbis, they were doing good things, but you know, you get away from the scripture and you get on to tradition. What do we have today? We, we got this, this crazy amalgamation of religion and, and government, right? I got some of these cards that I love to give out. These are little glow traps. When freedom dies, this is a really good one. I'm going to put these on the back back there. I'll just have to buy some more. I don't have a lot of them. But, you know, everybody can take one, maybe. All right? They're good. Yesterday, I was buying some razors at Walgreens. And I'm in there buying razors, and I'm talking to this gal, and I had a coupon, and I don't know how we got them. So she said something, 666. I'm always looking for a reason to pop one of these out. <laughs> And she said, 666. Six, six. And I says, oh. I says, hey. I says, I know you're not supposed to cross the little ties at work. I said, but here. I says, I'm your time to read this. And I slipped it. She says, thanks. <laughs> she says, I'll read it. <laughs> but that's a good thing. You know? These are just little things that we can do. You know? And this thing talks about where we are and what's going on. I don't know what you guys are doing out there to get the word out. I hope you're doing something. Anything. Because there's a lot of people out there that are hurting. They don't know the truth. They've been lied to. They don't, they're like Ray on the motorcycle. They're, their wife says, hey, you're in danger. Things are going to fall off of you. And he says, nah, I'm good. Everything's fine. We're okay. And when it happens, it's too late, isn't it? It's too late, isn't it? It's too late. You know, the Pharisee and the public, they both stand there in the temple to pray. And what, what does the Pharisee say? Thank God that I'm not like this man. I tithe and I keep the Sabbath and I do this and I do that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What does the Bible say about these two guys? One, they, it's, the one went home justified by God, right? And the other went home self-justified, didn't he? Self-justified. Stop and think about that. It's pretty scary. Let's turn to James. James 2. Now let's start with James 1. James 1. You guys get there to say amen. amen. James 1 and verse 27. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Who are the fatherless? Have you ever thought about that? Man, I got this water out of this thing. I to dump something in that fridge or something. Like spaghetti sauce or something. Who's the fatherless? Without God, huh? And we have a whole world of people Without God? Let's turn to 2 5. Dive deeper into this. 
Hearken, my beloved brethren. Hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do, do not they blaspheme that worthy name by which ye are called? I want to jump down to 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man saith he hath faith and hath not works? Can faith save him? This is the other side of the coin for the book of Romans, isn't it? Luther didn't want anything to do with this book. He said it's the epistle of straw, didn't he? But don't we see that this is the other side of the same coin where we talk about the book of Romans, right? All right. In the Greek, it, said, it actually says in 2.14 there, can such a faith save him? Can such a faith save him? I'm reading it from 15. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto him, Depart in peace, and be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them nothing, give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. So, is works a bad thing? No, we should have works of kindness, right? Pardon me? Be rewarded by our works. Are we saved by works? We're saved by faith. Right? Amen. But if we have no works, we have no faith, do we? Amen. It's a conundrum. <laughs> Does the Bible contradict itself? No. Okay. So, in 17 it says, Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Can, can a... I'm not really sure how to explain that. I'm just going to let that go. Let's go to 2.18. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. So there must be something to this work. Right? The devils believe, but they're not saved. Right? They're condemned. But they believe. How can that be? How can that be so? It's not a saving faith? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Is that the difference? It's not a loving work either. Okay. What is a saving faith? Out of the agape, it's in your heart. A faith that works, it's, it's not you. Right? Yeah. Works of the law are bad. They are works by self for salvation. That's what, the, that's what Paul talks about when he says works of the law. Works of the law. You are saved by faith, not works of the law. Does that mean works of the law? The law is bad? No. Works of the law. Works of the law are something that I'm doing to be saved. Rather than the work I'm doing because I am saved. Does that make sense? Okay. Faith is the propelling power. Work is the result of it. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Like, say I have a, a car... And when the rear wheels engage, because it's, a, it's my wife's car, it's a rear wheel drive car. When those wheels engage, the front wheels just follow. You know? So the action is 
one wheel doesn't start before the other. They roll together. John always talks about the, the rail, right? The train rail, the two tracks, right? Same difference. Same difference. We can't have just an intellectual faith. That's what that's what the demons have, right? Do they do they believe in the Sabbath? Yeah. yeah. Huh? Do, do they believe that uh, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and that there is no other? Yeah. They do, don't they? Do they believe in the health message? Sure. They know it's the truth, don't they? The You're darn right they do. Why they think they push this other garbage so hard? You know? <laughs> it makes a big difference. It makes a big difference of how you think, how you feel, what you do, you know. I used to hunt. I used to kill and eat. I did. I enjoyed it. Liked it. I have no desire for it anymore. I have no desire to kill anything. If I ran over something in the road, I'd probably feel bad. I mean, I wouldn't spend the whole day worried about it, but I wouldn't feel bad. But I have no, I have no bloodlust. Okay? There's none there. I have no desire to kill. Not at all. Thank God for that. Because I used to enjoy it. Anyways. This thing turned my page. 221. It says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works? When he had offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar? Boy, doesn't that sound strange? Huh? He wasn't? The Bible is lying? What does the Bible say? It says he was not. He was not. Yes, was not. Was not Abraham, our father, justified? That's, that's, I was reading from that. Old King James. Yeah. Already saying it's right. Yeah. Abraham was justified. Now listen, what's funny is, is that's the same argument that Paul uses in Rome. Only to say something different. Right. And that's why Martin Luther did not like the book of James. Right. They were they were fighting two different battles, but it's the same it's the yeah. same battle. Okay? You gotta understand. You have one is the Jew and one is the Gentile. And it's the both. They're, they're both saved the same way. It's both Jesus. Jesus is the only one that had it all together, straight, right, just, and true. You know, you guys, you got to understand. It's just the other side of the same coin. See, most most evangelicals look at Seventh Day Adventists <coughs> as what? Legalists. Legalists. You guys, you keep the law. What's the matter with you? Don't you know the law has been done away with? Well, wait a minute. Back up, look at your hanky. <laughs> if the law had been done away with, why would Jesus have to die? Amen. It's just that simple. Well, wait a minute. As our dear friend Catherine says, that means, wait, no, now we're 90% or then. But what we really want to get rid of is the Sabbath. Right? Isn't that what we really, when you, when you, when you really dig into it and you, and you have the end of discussion, that's what it's going to come to. Right? So now you Seventh-day Adventists, you're working your way to salvation because you rest. Yeah, that's really good. Doesn't that? You're working your way to salvation because you rest. That's an argument only the devil can make. When people say that to me, I just look at it really weird. <laughs> Get the weirdest looking face I can come up with. And look at it. And then don't say nothing. Just shut up. The first one who speaks loses. <laughs> you learn that, you learn that in business. When you're trying to negotiate something, you just keep your mouth shut. <laughs> shut up. I sat with a guy one time for 15 minutes. You didn't think that was uncomfortable. <laughs> That was Anyways. The Bible does not contradict itself, brothers and sisters. Let's go to 222. Let's continue. See how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. 
or complete. You see? It's complete. This is for where the people that, that stick on Romans, you know, they just love Romans so much that they, they don't even look at the book of James. They can't conceive this. But there's no difference here. The Bible is, it does not contradict itself in any way. Let's continue to read. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God. Isn't there something that has to happen for someone to believe? And it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only? Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works, when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For the body without spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Can you have a body without the spirit? Can you have a spirit without the body? No. You can. <laughs> Somebody's phone's talking to him. Sorry, I didn't get that. That was cute. Faith is the life that gives the body movement. Okay? Faith is the life that gives the life. Spirit is the energizing force or the driving mechanism. I want to read something to you guys. It's not a big read, it's a small read. Small read. This comes from Selected Messages, Book 1, Chapter 62, Justified by Faith. Okay? Grace is unmerited favor. And the believer is justified without any merit of his own. Without any claim to offer God, he is justified through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, who stands in the courts of heaven as the sinner's substitute and surety. But while he is justified because of the merit of Christ, he is not free to work unrighteousness. Faith works by love and purifies the soul. Faith buds and blossoms and bears a harvest of precious fruit. Where faith is, good works appear. The sick are visited, the poor are cared for, the fatherless and widows are not neglected. The naked are clothed, the destitute are fed, Christ went about doing good, and when men are united with him, they love the children of God, and meekness and truth guide their footsteps. I get an amen on that? Amen. amen. The rich young ruler would have been a good elder in Seventh-day Adventist Church, wouldn't he? He really would have. When he had this little talk with Jesus, he said, I do all these things, right? The Bible even says that Jesus loved him, right? Jesus even quoted, his, his conduct was exemplary, this, this rich young ruler. There's no doubt about it. I mean, there's no doubt about it when you study this out. Jesus quotes the last six commandments, but he replaces, Thou shalt not covet with you shall love your neighbor as yourself. 